Um, I'd love to hear a little bit about the origin of the of the project, um, the the idea behind it, uh, and how it kind of started. Um, well, um, I gave uh, Teresa a script I wrote a couple of years ago. Uh, it was a movie script. She liked it, and she told me she's unable to do it because uh, it cannot be done. <laughs> uh, but she told me to give her something else. So I gave her like 20 ideas and we picked four of them. All of them were s of a spy genre and the sleepers uh, were the winner of this so-called contest. <laughs> So, um, Sleepers wins the contest of the screenplays. Um, Teresa, what's next? How did it uh, come together in terms of um, getting Ivan involved, et cetera? Well, actually, oh, yep. goody, goody. Uh, it's not working. It's not working? No. no. Thank you oh. so much. OK. Uh, well, actually, I knew Ivan from my previous project that also got screened at TIFF uh -huh. uh, like three years ago. And after this project, I was pretty sure I want to do with Ivan some, some new project. And like at that time, Andrea has been already around with the sleeper script. And I just offered it to, uh, to Ivan. And like we were pretty sure that like we would like to do it together. Amazing. And um, we were talking this a, a little bit, but how much did the the uh, end product change from what you had written? Massively, <laughs> uh, but in in a good way. Uh, I'm sure that uh, you already know this is a complicated story. Uh, the first version of the script was like a hundred times more complicated. The, there were four other major characters and uh, well it was that kind of series that you have to watch uh, since the beginning to the end so even if your wife is calling you just uh, hand me something don't go and well don't go <laughs> don't blink don't you, blink you would, you would be lost actually so bad idea uh so the result is is uh, I'm very satisfied with the, with the result. As a first time writer, I tended to make uh, things more complicated than it was necessary. And I guess this is a question for all of you. Um, so this marks the 30th anniversary of the Velvet Revolution. Um, what made this the right time to tell this story? Don't leave that one to me. No. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa, do you want to? Uh, well, uh, look, it's actually it's a nice coincidence, and we will premiere it uh, around Europe on uh, November the seventeenth. It's true, but actually, like we've been working on this for quite a while, and like if the story was ready earlier, <laughs> I wouldn't mind premiering it last year. <laughs> uh, with four other major characters. <laughs> <laughs> What uh, watching the screening now again? This is the second time I've seen it, and uh, what I find is that it it really is an eight part series, and everything sort of makes sense in its entirety. That this is kind of a tease. It really is a tease. Uh, the, the the first episode as it gets going, as you get to go to know the characters, it starts get it, it starts to get moving in 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 the second episode as as you start to see all, all the connections between the characters but it really gets go you have to see it sort of in its entirety i'm realizing that uh we're sort of spoiler aware so it's kind of it's it's difficult to talk about it in any kind of bigger context because it, it really does uh it does make sense in all eight episodes it's six six <laughs> spoiler when i say eight i mean six <laughs> That was a spoiler. Oh my gosh! Yeah, Pri I knew that. <laughs> Prime time is is such a tease. I, I will be honest uh, with that. Um, David, what attracted you to this story in the first place and, and this role? Well, in a lot of ways, it, it, it is my history. I was born in Prague, but I uh, I grew up in Vancouver. So uh, for me, when the revolution happened in 1989, I was graduating from UBC and uh, I watched it on a TV set. You know, and my mom. Uh, spoke English, uh, spoke Czech to me at, at, at home, and so when I was a kid, I, I, I kind of, as an immigrant kid and living in Vancouver, I, I kind of thought that everybody has two languages. If there's a language that you speak at home, which is called Czech, 
And then there's a language out on the streets that everyone speaks, which is called English. <laughs> everyone has that, doesn't they? Especially in Canada. So I, I sort of thought that that was the, 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 you know, we'd go visit someone and we'd say, why aren't we speaking Czech right now? Uh, so in a lot of ways, when the revolution happened and, uh, and 1989 came around, it, it was something that was like a magnetic pull. I just knew I, I, I had to go uh, back. And I did. I did. I returned for the nine, most of the 90s. I was there. I, I ran a theater company and I was... I, I was working uh, in in Prague as as an actor, which was it was an amazing time. Uh, but this period, this era, I remember coming there, you know, never having been there before until I was in my you know in my twenties. I, I was just blown away by all the stuff that you just saw on on, on the screen. You know the, how dark it is. How you know you look at apartment blocks and every window is flickering with the same TV channel because there's only one. Uh, sort of things like that, the the, the trams and, and and all of that, and and it was it was a great period of flux in the '90s, just after this uh, story uh, story happened. So that, that's kind of my personal history, and you know, uh, also you know, growing up in Vancouver and having pictures of Charles Bridge and and Harachane on the on the, on the wall, uh, and knowing that I'd never go back because it was an absolute thing. You'd never that's a bridge that you never go back across. Uh, it was it was an amazing time to be able to do that, you know. Like in eight, 1989, it was like, well, I don't want to simplify. It wasn't a magic wand, but it was like, and now you can, right? And 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 so it's in some ways, and it was an opportunity uh, to rediscover, you know, my past and 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 my history. So when this role came up and this sort of opportunity to sort of play both sides of the uh, of the fence, as it were, even though it is English and not Canadian. Uh, it, it, it is wonderful. I think with um, uh, Andre kind of connecting with what you were talking about earlier, there is a sense when you when you watch these two episodes that there's this great introduction to all of these characters, and you're trying to uh, understand okay, uh, what role are these characters going to play in the rest of the series? But each character is very distinct, and I guess David, my question to you is. Um, what kind of direction did Yvonne give you or, or what you saw him give to other actors to really, um, I don't know, get in two roles and really establish the unique characters that you have? He, he's a tremendous director in the sense that he really knows how to work with actors. Not every director does, and, and, and he has a real uh, skill with that. Um, it, it, there, it, with 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 the checks, this is a story that I think is is in, inherent to to all of us. We sort of knew the past and and and, and know what's going on. So it, it wasn't that much to try to compel us to to to, to be in. The, it was more about impelling us into the kind of performances that 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 he wanted. He's uh, an easygoing director. It was a great time on set, despite what it <laughs> what it looks like. It was a lot of fun to uh, 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 to make. It was freaking cold in Prague when we shot it. This was last year. Uh, come on, Canadian. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm from Vancouver. Come on, it's it's a little bit. Yeah. But it was. Uh, 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 but and the shoot was great. And uh, again, this is just. Uh, it, it feels like this is just the tip of the iceberg. What really happens in this series is episode three, four, five, six, not seven, eight. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, um, uh, but working with him was working with him was 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 tremendous. It's an absolute treat. His attention to detail. Uh, it was uh, what really floored me is uh, that scene where I'm in the restaurant. I'm reading the uh, the menu there. You don't, you guys didn't see the menu, but I mean, it was literally like I remember them from 1989. You know, Uto Pense right? There's such a fantastic style that this series has. That's the first thing that came to me, and it really starts from the opening credit sequence. I think. It's one of the most beautiful opening credit sequences I've seen in a very long time. Um, in terms of its style, and this is maybe a question for you, Teresa, in terms of what we're getting from HBO, whether it's HBO Europe or um, the HBO USA, is is a very distinct style. It's, it's championing, championing almost cinematic television. And, and I guess my question is, is... Um, is is that consistent in HBO Europe? I'm sure, in terms of audiences here, they may know HBO Canada or US a little more. But is that kind of attention to almost um, director cinema working in that medium still a thing? Um, I probably cannot speak for the whole of HBO Europe, but on my shows, yeah. we are kind of detail obsessed. 
And I think what basically that's what differs us from other networks that like we are really that there is a great production value and uh, that we are really that we um, really stress the creative side of the project that we are really there since the like page one until the the very very last cut so uh yeah and in terms of the style did you and uh Yvonne have conversations early on about what you wanted it to look like and and uh what were those conversations like yeah, we had it since the very, very beginning, but as we like worked on uh, on the previous project together, we were kind of on the same page. And uh, also many people who were who worked with us on Wasteland, on our previous project, like, you know, continued working with us. So we are kind of like sure what we want to, uh, what we want to reach. And David, uh, as an actor, you're, you're talking about seeing the whole series afterwards, but did you have a sense of it all um, as you were kind of given that script, and did you know where it was going from day one? Well, I, I was given the strip, script uh, in bits and pieces, right? So I was given the first two, like you guys saw tonight, and I was like, okay, <laughs> what happens? She doesn't go to the airport. Okay, so 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 what happens? And as they sort of came out, uh, it was I was literally on tenderhooks, like thinking, what? Where is this going to go? What what what's this going to be? And I, I can honestly say that without giving anything away, that when it does end by the end of the sixth, uh, it really is. It really, in its in its entirety, it, it functions amazingly well. Yeah, <laughs> it 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 does. And I was, uh, it it does. It 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 really gets moving. It really gets moving. Isn't that a spoiler? <laughs> no, it's not a spoiler. I didn't say anything. All right, we uh, have time for some questions. So please raise your hand high and uh, please project because we do not have mics. Uh, this gentleman in the front here. <laughs> I knew that was going to be the first question. <laughs> well, I cannot sp I cannot speak for HBO in the US and like Canada generally. There is a day-to-day -day premiere on all our European territories on November the 17th. And but like the US premiere hasn't been confirmed yet although there are dealings ongoing. End of November. <laughs> Maybe? Well, I'm going to call it here. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I see a question um up there. Yep. We wouldn't shoot it. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was actually like tough task to find, you know, somebody who who, who is almost like double native speaker, like, you know, having, you know, mother tongue and being able to speak in English. Yeah, we had uh, David um, pretty soon in mind as we were aware of him. <laughs> come on. Hey, well, an actor, is, an actor is happy to work. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> Yeah, no, I got a I got a phone call in Powell River, BC, right, from the Czech Republic, going like, uh, we've got a project in spy, like, okay, whatever. So, I mean, at the time, I was working on Arrow, right? So, it's, it's like, oh, okay, uh, uh, let's 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 see. And uh, yeah, the night, like I said, I got the script and 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 hooked right away because it's like, okay, well, what's going on here? What what is this? Uh, uh, you know, knowing the political sort of background of it and and this particular. Very ugly time, <laughs> acid wash jeans and 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 that it, it was uh, it, it was uh, really compelling and you, you got a sense of that from 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 the script. It's very rare that you get a script like that and you go, oh wow, this is great. This is really great. It was the script. It was the script. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Don't pretend it's not you. Come on. <laughs> Other questions. A question here. There are some, uh, they deal with the communist past in a bad way. Um, we try to do something different and um, it's based on two facts. The first is that it's set in, uh, in the times right before the revolution. So the change is coming, everybody knows it, but no one knows the nature of the change and no one knows when exactly the change will come. And the second thing is that we try to 
do something of the spy genre that is uh, being told from the perspective of someone who is sort of an outsider. So not only that she's a woman, because back in the 80s it was predominantly a male's world, but she's also uh, an artist. She's not involved in politics because, as you uh, might see, uh, she's not very fond of her father being involved in uh, politics at all because it complicated her own life. And so she doesn't know anything about the world she has to face to find out the truth. And that's the perspective that uh, Czech filmmakers don't use very often. All right. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. It's for you, yeah, Petr Malasek. It's 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 phenomenal. I love the music. Yeah. Um, for Ivan, the director, the music is very very important, and we've been like talking about this like since the very very beginning. And uh, the name of the composer was like kind of known even before like shooting started because like he's we really and the composer really started uh, working on the show since the day one. He was really visiting us on a set. Like he was watching dailies. And we are really lucky that we had a chance to work with Petr Malasek. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, overwhelming. And he's the brother of the uh, of the editor, which is also it plays oh, their its part. Yeah. Yes, they're brothers. Yeah. Now I heard a rumor that the soundtrack might come out on vinyl. Wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> yeah, it will. Yeah, amazing. All right, we have time for one more question. Any other questions? If I can't, if you are raising your hand and I can't see your hand, please stand up, because there's a light in my face. No, all right, all right. Well, this is is great, and I just want to do one more thanks to uh, uh, Andre, David, and uh, Teresa. This is fantastic, and thanks for being here. Thank thanks for having so us. Thank, Thank you very much for inviting us. I would love to thank you for coming. Really, I really appreciate Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Toronto. Thank you.